שוב, שלום לכם, אחים ואחיות יקרים ואהובים. אנחנו ממשיכים את הלימודים by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Yesterday we talked about the conditions of hearing His voice and receiving the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And we spoke about the need to submit our own will and to, before God, submit it. And we talked about how God has a plan for our lives and that He prepared even before this world was created. And we spoke about how the, only the Holy Spirit knows what that plan is of God and only He is the one that can reveal to us. We spoke also about how that as we open our hearts and we say, let not my will, but let your will be done, the Holy Spirit then can put that will, that, that will, that same plan that God has for us, and He turns it into our own will. And then we pray according to that will, really, of God. Because He put that will in us. Now I want something suddenly. In my case, I wanted to be a production worker. I told you my testimony briefly yesterday. God put that will in my heart. And then He will lead me to this place. And what happens? In First John, we read the next chain in that link in that chain. So what happens when we submit our will and we give place for God to lead us. And then He puts that will in us. And then we see in First John, from chapter 5, Verses 14 and 15, we read, This is the confidence which we have before Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. God hears when we ask according to His will. And verse 15, And if we know that He hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have also the request which we have asked from Him. So then we will receive what we have asked, because we ask according to the will of God. And that's a wonderful thing. You know, even stronger than that, you know, when we really want to be sure, we have a promise in Matthew chapter 14. Sorry, 18. Matthew chapter 18. Here's something about not just one person who received the guidance of the Holy Spirit, but two. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it should be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. It's wonderful that two, when they walk in the Spirit, and two ask, that both of them receive the same thing by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, then that in itself is a strengthening and a testimony that that is the will of God. Not that the two of us want something in the flesh, that, but rather something we both receive by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It's something that we want the same thing. And it's a strengthening of our faith. And we ask for it, and God will us answer it. So we have here the key, that secret to answers, to answers to requests that God is answering, and the desires of our heart that are being fulfilled. And if you ask for things that don't happen and don't happen to happen, maybe you need to ask yourself, is this something, God, that you really even want? Is it your will? This thing? I remember that before we had our house, and we really wanted to buy a property with a view to the Canaret, the Sea of Galilee. It was in the early 1980s. And we made big efforts to find owners of properties, and nothing, nothing worked out of that. So, nothing. And then one day, suddenly, suddenly, I had the thought, wait, maybe God doesn't want me in that place. Maybe He doesn't want me in Puria. Maybe in another place. And I say, God, I submit my will to you. If it's not your will, take me to wherever you will. And he led me to a different place, a place that in my flesh I would have never chosen. But you know, God, also there, he gave me the joy and the blessing, and I never was sorry that I came to that same village where I live today. And God has given me a love for this place. So, an answer to requests of prayer. It's something very precious. Let's see something else in the same direction. The conditions of receiving answers, of requests, in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, in verse 7, it says, And if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, this is John 15, 7, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. You see that if I stand in him, abide in him, how do I abide in him? 
like he said, you're the, I'm the vine, you're the branches. And so the Holy Spirit comes from heaven and enters into our lives. And, and if I abide in him, and the Holy Spirit is working in me, then the word of God is within me. And he says, whatever you ask, whatever you ask, and let my words abide in you. He's talking about the living word, the word that the Holy Spirit is speaking out in our heart. And God wants it to be this way. God wants you to do that. And if you ask according to that will, that specific word for you, and it will be done for you. God will answer those prayers. Those requests receive answers. God will answer these requests. And when he answers these requests, he says that in verse 11, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be made full. What a joy, what a blessing it is. We have satisfaction from life. You're walking on God's way. The Holy Spirit has given you the fruit of joy. And you also see the results of your life and the blessing of God on it. And you've got joy in your heart. And God is blessing you. And it's wonderful. And it's great. And you're satisfied. And life isn't boring. It's not wasted. You don't get to the end of your life and look back and say, what did I get out of my life? No, I'm not there. I'm joyful. And I'm thankful to God for what He's given me to do. And I want to encourage each one of us to walk in that path. And we also have in that same chapter, in chapter 15 of John, in verse 18, 16 says, verse 16, You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit, and that your fruit would remain. And so that um, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, He may give to you. So he worked with that fruit in his li our lives, the fruit of peace and joy. And whatever we ask, God will answer. He will give it to us. And that's a wonderful thing, to have that kind of relationship with our Father in heaven. So I want to encourage all of us to walk in that direction, to, give, to walk according to God's will, give a place in our lives for the Holy Spirit to work, and then to walk that race, to run that race. Look at Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Philippians 2, 13 and 14. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in the Messiah Yeshua. So I forget what is behind me, and I run forward. We want to run forward to run that race of life that God has given to us and to stretch forward like those runners who stretch forward as they get near the finish line. They try to be the first and reach the line first. And we then run focused on our purpose. Our purpose is to get to heaven, to fulfill our race that God has given us of deeds, to do it in the grace of God and in joy from Him. Hallelujah. What a wonderful privilege we have to be the children of God and to be workers in His field. And may the Lord bless you, brothers and sisters, for this new day. And let's run forward this race that the Lord has given to us. I love you. In the name of Yeshua, our Lord. Amen.